people tend to label behavior based on personality traits as opposed to looking at the circumstances behind the behavior. So let's say I walked and I tripped and you saw that. Without talking to me, you may make a very quick assumption that I'm, I'm a klutz, but you may not know that I tripped on a wire. So you're lacking that information and so you make a certain presumption. So if you expand that discussion and incorporate it into an investigation, the investigator then knowing that, the tendency to label that way, they can then use those skills to pull back the layers of bias and inferences, presumptions. Uh, there's a tendency by investigators to come up with their own hypothesis of how the crime occurred. And that can affect how you collect the evidence or how you view the evidence. The investigator's job is to get to, to the truth of the matter or to look at the weaknesses of the case. And so if a witness's testimony is colored up a little bit by a certain type of bias, bias is not necessarily a, a, an all negative bad thing, but it can skew the accuracy of what they saw. In a personal injury, they may think they saw yellow, but it was really red. So the job of the investigator is to, to confirm and to identify whether the light truly was yellow by pulling back some of the biases. Well, an investigator may end up, if he's not careful, making a certain conclusion. Let's say it's something as simple as uh, domestic violence, and he gets to the scene, and he sees blood on one person, and he's calm, and the other person's upset and hysterical. He may make an assumption that that's the victim, but in fact, that may not be the victim. He just changed his demeanor when the cop got there, for example. So the investigator or the cop may begin to collect evidence that proves his presumption that that is the victim. Another, another quick example is the, is the bombing of some trains in Madrid where there were fingerprints and there was a study done. Based on that investigation, there was a study done where fingerprint experts were put together in an experiment. The researchers collected fingerprints that they had already looked at many years earlier and confirmed that there was a match. They took those fingerprints unknowing to the experts uh, who had already evaluated and found a match and showed it to them again and threw in what is called contextual information and said these fingerprints were collected from the bombing of the trains. We found out that there, the, the experts over there are saying there's no match, but we want you to reevaluate them. That information that there is no match influenced <coughs> their perception, their objectivity, created a bias. They looked at those prints and said, you're right, there's no match. They had previously found a match on those prints before. So that contextual information influenced their objectivity. The first step is to get educated on, the, on, on how certain biases, like correspondence bias, confirmation bias, uh, attribution error, how that influences thinking and perception. Once they understand the principles of that, it actually allows them to look at the picture and to set a, a list of questions in advance of what they want to do. How do they want to attack that evidence? How can they explore that evidence? What influences prompted that witness to say what they said? It may be the truth. It may be 100% accurate. A lot of times it's not. It's influenced by the circumstances. I use this mostly in mitigating. Fundamental attribution error is not a, a, a legally recognized defense. It's not like I can go up to a court and say, well, because of these attribution errors, the person is not guilty. Um, so a lot of times it's used in mitigation and explaining the circumstances. Uh, the other side, in my case, the prosecution, may paint a monster. It's my job to mitigate that and to paint and put other circumstances that would explain the behavior. And that's how I use it. It could be used in trial occasionally, depending on circumstances. It is often used in mitigation and sentencing.